So it's time for a Cask Master catch up chat with the main man himself, Pablo Discobar. How are you doing, Pablo? Everything all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, you? Yeah, not bad at all, thanks. Uh, thought we had to get you on for a chat because uh, you were on, on your birthday episode along with Pat, and that's kind of where yeah, we. Yeah announced the contestants and stuff for series three of Caskmaster, which for all those that are watching this, maybe on the YouTube or Spotify, if you're listening to our show for the first time, um, the YouTube, I still call it the YouTube. Um, but if you're watching it or, or listening to it, uh, Caskmaster is a video series on Instagram based on the actual TV show Taskmaster. But obviously, as you can probably guess, all the tasks are beer related and Pablo has chosen. It's the third season of it now. I, I was lucky enough to be picked to be to be part of the first series. We were like guinea pigs. Uh, yeah. We got bullied into it. And then, <laughs> sorry, Pablo. <laughs> second series was uh, 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 you know there was myself, Andy, and Dave in the first series. And then the second series had Joe at the White Fox Pub. You had uh, obviously Crafty, uh, Be a Lad, Jake, and Jan at the Box and Hounds. That was brilliant. And then series three. It's quite you. Well, it was quite, you know, you've, you've got Mark and T- John of the Tail Tavern who, who live across the road from each other. And now yeah. we've got Spenno, haven't we, who stepped in uh, to the fold to, to, to step in for, for Reg, who decided against it in sort of late on uh, for various, obviously, you know, genuine reasons and so on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this, yeah, is, this, this is the lineup. Yeah. This is the lineup now, isn't it, though? Um, yeah. So, and it, it's been brilliant. I mean, with you, you as of. Wednesday night, just before uh, the Ale Nodio podcast came out, Thursday day after, whatever it was, uh, obviously just before this show has come out, you uh, released the second episode. Yeah, yeah. The second episode in series three. I mean, let's just start off by saying how well it's been going so far. It's been, how's it, I mean, it's been received really well, hasn't it, Pablo? Yeah, it's mad. I mean, I, I always find it mad because I came up with the idea obviously a while ago and I think, yeah, nobody's going to do this. And then they'll just get sick and just not do the tasks. But everybody just seems to love doing it. And you can see the anxiety when the first sort of thing starts. And then now you can see them loving it. Like Spenno said, he, he had a lot of anxiety when it first started. I think whatever got myself into. And now he's just absolutely loving it, puts a smile on his face, looks forward to the challenges. Uh, they're all a bit friendly this year, unlike last year. There's not as much sort of um, banter uh, and fighting talk this year. They all sort of uh, fight they're friendly for their own good, um, <laughs> which is nice. But yeah, it's really good. I mean, Can 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 challenged the whole point of that for the first episode uh, was to get everybody involved, get as many people involved as you can. And you can see a lot of people apprehensive. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. And then you just see them grab the can and just start doing the Can Can. Um, Random people in pubs and bars. We've had bar staff doing it. We've had the postman doing it. Nearly put his zip out, bless him. Just, yeah, it's just been so, so great just to see people laughing their heads off and smiling doing the can can for no reason whatsoever, other than we just asked them to do it. And I'm, I'm trying, I'm not going to try and reveal any details because I want this to be really special for anyone who's not watched any of Castmaster yet. I want it to be special for them to go and watch it and find out who wins each task. So I'm not going to go into any detail about who wins what task, but the how they have approached the task so far has been just amazing. And the effort that is going into these, um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's it's mind boggling because I come up with tasks, and most of these I came up with weeks, months ago. Um, and you think, will anybody do that? Am I pushing it too far? Uh, will this make certain people awkward? And you, you you don't really grasp how much effort they're going to put into it. And then I get videos sent in, and he's my submission for this week. Gets up little secret submissions from each contestant, and you look at it and you think, "What? That's <laughs> ridiculous." Um, how much effort have you gone to for that? Or they've spent a bit of money doing it, or in some cases spent a bit of money and then took it back to the shop and got a refund. Um, so you, you kind of, I'm very taken aback all the time of how much effort goes into it and how much time and the thought process and you can see like how much thoughts going into each task and you, it's mind boggling. 
And and on your side of things, it must be getting quite tough to come up with the challenges as well, obviously, because you're, you know, unlike the actual TV show Taskmaster, you're restricted in the sense that it's got to be sort of something beer related. Yeah, I, mean, I, I try and make it roughly beer related, craft related, drink related, bar related, whatever it might be. Um, and that, that's sort of limiting in one sense. But then Taskmaster also has... Um, the benefit of the role turning up to a location so they can sort of unveil things and the, the crew can prepare things. Uh, and they have a whole crew of people probably coming up with the tasks. I've got me in one, <laughs> one tiny brain. Um, and then I, I, I've got to sort of, if I want to do that sort of task, I've got to pre-prepare it, send it in a box in the post, get used to open it, which I've done with you. I've done with um, yeah. a few people. So you're sort of thinking, yeah, I'd love to do this, but how am I going to do that and keep the element of surprise and get the unveil for each contestant? So sometimes part of that surprise is lost um, and sometimes I can't sort of facilitate a task I want to do in my head. But it is... And it is yeah, I mean, harder. if anybody... And if anybody does get um, any ideas um, for taskmaster tasks send them pablo's way and also if people want to get involved in like you know if you see one of the contestants or the contestants doing a particular task you know in the past we've had people trying things themselves haven't they sometimes or you know having a go at things themselves as well yeah i mean again without trying to give too much away we did a drinking task uh in series two and i put it out there for people to sort of see if you can to see if he can do it faster and better than the contestants. But unfortunately, when I put that shout out, out I forgot that John Box was one of the people doing it. <laughs> uh, so obviously, John Box gets changed in the phone box and wears a cape and drinks faster than any human being I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so everybody just looked at that and said, well, there's no point in doing that challenge because nobody's ever going to get anywhere near your John's time, never mind beat it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, watch out for the tasks coming up in the rest of series three because there may well be one where you can have a go at a little bit of a challenge in your bar with your friends and see if you can do it better than them or faster than them or um see if you can beat the contestants yourself so that that might be coming up excellent and the last thing uh, i want to mention about Caskmaster is that i was speaking to um to Peggy at the obviously at the Ashmore Arms, who's who's our judge on the show in the Song Request courtroom and everything like that for for the listeners and YouTube viewers who maybe don't know, um, but obviously it's her fella Mark who's the contestant for the Ashmore Arms, and she sort of and this is a this is a really sort of good and fair comment to make, but as the series of Caskmaster progresses, the level just goes up and up and up in terms of like trying to top each each season and these people who are taking part have watched the previous cast masters and then they're trying to beat you know the ones from the season before they're trying to kind of yeah. up the game and and be, be even more wow factor so that's adding a whole nother level to it as well isn't it yeah i mean that's definitely fair to say because like you said earlier you was essentially were guinea pigs and i was basically finding now does this platform work uh in terms of a concept for the first cv so you was a very much sort of the guinea pigs for the whole thing, really. Um, and then CB2 contestants sort of had the benefit of, right, okay, I can see what this is about. Uh, a lot of which hadn't watched, watched Taskmaster, weren't, weren't even aware of the programme. So they've gone off and watched that show, which is kind of the whole point, really. I'm just parodying one of my favourite programmes for no monetary gain. I'm not doing it for any sort of benefit. I'm just, I love the show, so I'm just doing a parody of that. Um, and they've sort of gone off and and well now i know how it works now i'm going to really show off and try and be the best and then this series has the benefit of wow last series really went for it it's kind of a bit of pressure for us to do the same um i know i did sort of um get a few messages from from judge peggy over the weekend um which I've apologised for because her house is getting taken over quite often and <laughs> uh, there's lots of things arriving, coming and going. And yeah, so I've, I've kind of publicly apologised for that, <laughs> as you will see uh, in yesterday's episode. 
So go and watch that and say the public apology to Peggy and why I'm apologising, do I? That's it. Everybody, make sure you go and check out the the latest, uh, well, all the cast masters that you can possibly watch if you've not already, but particularly, obviously, episode uh, two of season three. Go and check it out and see how the contestants got on. Um, I want to share some of the some of the little previews though, for our YouTube viewers, uh, just of a few things that have taken um, part across the, the the current Cast Master series, series three so far. So that hopefully anyone who catches this on YouTube might then go and give Pablo Disco Bar a follow, so that you can see it on the screen there at Pablo Disco Bar UK on Instagram, and then you can go and start watching the video series. But let that this is task one, so I'm just going to put this this briefly up. It's just going to just going to play a short clip of it, and this is actually uh, John at the Taylor Tavern submission. So this was the task, uh, Pablo, where they had to get as many people to hold a can and do the can can as possible. <laughs> So yeah. I'll I'll just just to demonstrate to our viewers at the minute this is what people were doing and how many people got involved absolutely incredible <laughs> That's me hit gone. Cheers. Hey. There you go. That was just a little taster of of just a few people who got involved. But I think, I mean, what was the total altogether? Of all the people who who got involved in that, it was well over a hundred different people who were doing the can can with a can, weren't they? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, um, yeah, it was about one hundred and fifteen or something like that. I think off the top of my head, um, I could quickly try and work that out, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it was one hundred and forty, one hundred and fifteen. Incredible, and that many different people doing it, and it weren't just people in the beer community and Instagram, was it? It was like you know, like like you said at the start of the at the start of our chat, you know, it was people behind bars, it was people just wherever they were. Yeah, there wasn't any prisoners just to clear that up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then task uh, task two in series three, tell us about. I mean, you can tell us the brief, can't you? Yeah, so task one was can, can, can. Uh, task two, I wrote a long time before this. So um, it is only cans. So the task was to um, sell your favourite brewery in the sexiest way possible. Sexiest way wins. And that was basically it, as open as that. So interpret that however you want. Excellent. So that is that is the one, that is the latest task. Uh, to yeah. go and watch for people who maybe have been keeping up with Castmaster, and you've you know you, you've kind of watched that first one and so on. Go and watch, uh, you know, see episode two, task two, which has just come out now, uh, and you'll be able to go and see how, uh, you know, the likes of Mark at the t- Ashmore Arms, John at the Tail Tavern, and Spenno at the uh, at the Spencer Arms, how they all approach that and what they did. Um, what I'm going to do now for our YouTube viewers, though, is actually tease some of those without giving too much away, okay? And uh, the first one I'm going to play is this one from Spenner. It's not going to make this filming and everything flow like it should be. It's not going to be very sexy. I mean, I'm Jack Sparrow, for goodness sake. I'm sexy, sailing the sea sexy, yes. So you're not switching me off, sunshine. No, no, no. (laughs) 
<laughs> so that was that was just a little snippet of what Spenno was doing. Um, so that was his kind of approach uh, to to selling, making a can sexy, basically. You know, your only cans task. Let's take a look um, at, at another one now, and this one was John's. So again, uh, you could see obviously John at the Taylor Taverns approach there and go and watch the full videos because that is just a little sneaky preview of what yeah. they were doing. And fact, and this is just shows you how they all sort of took completely different and, and they do in each task take completely different approaches to stuff, don't they? So this is Mark's yeah. attempt. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> so this is it. I mean, you know, if you like what you, th these, this is the kind of quality you're getting from Caskmaster. So go and check out the, uh, the the series, obviously on Pablo Disco Bar's Instagram. Uh, that's just a little snippet of the kind of thing you can expect, and that's just from the stuff in uh, in in Task Two Series Three. Um, Pablo. Um, so when do we expect Caskmaster to end, do you reckon? And when when when's the sort of have you got a particular date in mind when the, the last one might go out, sort of thing? End of the series. Yes, end of series three, yeah. Uh, it depends really on I work around the contestants quite largely because they're giving up a lot of their time, they're all busy with work, they've got really demanding jobs. So I sort of flex around them really. I try not to give any specific dates too far ahead just in case um so it's always a little bit awkward to sort of plan that far ahead so our, every every task every week when we finish giving the results out on the on the video chat i'll then sort of say how will you fix this week can you accommodate the next task do you want a little break um and try and work around there so i'm very much dependent on them i do respect the fact that they're giving up time for no good reason at all um, other than for a laugh and to basically amuse me and muse other people, so <laughs> I, I know how you feel. No, I, no, you feel Pablo. I've been doing that for like three years now with this with the podcast <laughs> yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I'm always respectful of that. So I, I always say, look, I work around you. I always say as well, every series people. So I, you know, the Castmaster's great, but like I said right from the very start, I write the titles, you write the book. Um, it's all right, me giving out a challenge, but you're you're the people who basically make the show because as a contestant, I've got a clear what you're gonna do. Um, and it's the amazing tasks that come back that basically make it what it is. And I, I said this to you the other day, based on the first challenge, can can can, um, of I think I might have created a monster uh, that I can no longer control because of the submissions <laughs> I'm getting now. Um, so yeah, it, it gets a bit sort of. The, the task two of only cans, you sort of get a message to on WhatsApp and you think, right, here's my submission. And you, you're sort of cringing, looking, <laughs> pressing the play button, not quite sure what you're going to get. Um, so there's that sort of slight fear from my point of view of, oh my God, what am I going to get sent? Do I really want to click play on this on this video and watch what I've been sent? <laughs> well pablo you're doing a brilliant job with it keep it up because it's keeping us all very entertained so yeah well done with that <laughs> the last thing i want to ask you about okay well there's a couple of things to finish off with uh right. first thing is your your recent live that you posted you did a really short little live posing a question about whether and why we could potentially like craft beer lovers and craft beer drinkers. Should we be starting to garnish our drinks? 
Yeah, because we, we do it with cocktails and stuff. We do it with gins. Everybody loves like sort of little bits of fruit in the side of the gin or in the gin itself, uh, little berries in or whatever, or strawberries in it or raspberries or whatever it might be. And then obviously people do that with cocktails. But craft beer is like massively fruit based. The reason why I drink it is, like I said in the live, I kind of got bored with lagers and things. And I used to like a bit of cider, but then cider would sort of wreck your internals over a full night out. Um, so the craft for me is sort of like that halfway house between drinking a pint of lager and getting a, a bit of fruit from a, a, a cider. So it just makes sort of logical sense to me to then think, well, it's really fruity. The fact that I love the fruit in the craft, why not start adding a bit of fresh fruit with the craft? And I, on that live, I actually ate a strawberry. I shoved it on the side of the pint and then dropped some blueberries in. And it was lovely, like eating the strawberry and drinking the craft. Just took it to a whole new level. And I thought, right, OK, I'm not sure everybody would quite like to sit in a bar with that happening on the side of the pint glass. Like, oh, get that crap off the side of my glass. But it did really taste nice. It was, it made it better, I thought. Well, I mean, I, I kind of see the sense in some... I mean, obviously, I know Andy Dunn mentioned this, but Blue Moon traditionally gets yeah, served with a slice of orange. That's kind of something you expect. Um, yeah. I'm not I'm not personally sure about, like, you know, something like... I mean, there's no reason... Y your theory is correct. There's no reason why people, you know, shouldn't just go, well, why not? Because you've got that sort of, like, like say, fruit notes in a lot of the beers and stuff. Certainly, I mean, yeah. I don't like I don't like sours, but certainly I'm surprised that sour beers haven't gone down that route already because they are, like, yeah. massively <laughs> super fruity, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, a lot of sours that I've drunk recently have just literally been, like, a full-on fruit smoothie. So... If you're sticking strawberries and things on the side, that just makes absolute sense. I could, I've, honestly, half the sours I've drank, 8%, 6%, 10% in some case, I could feed that to kids and it wouldn't be any the wiser. <laughs> you just, you, you, and I'm not going to, obviously, but you, you're drinking it, thinking this just tastes like a fruit smoothie I would take to a gym. Do, do you know what I mean? Like a health yeah, kick? Yeah. But you, it, it's not. People have to get in touch with Pablo Disco Bar for your thoughts on that. And uh, maybe try it for yourselves in your own home bars this weekend. That's, that's the benefit of having a home bar and a pub shed. You can try this yeah. without getting without getting laughed at when you're in a pub and you're asking for a slice on the side of your uh, on the side of your you know your beer or something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, give it a try. I mean, don't forget as well. There's always the famous the cocktail. That's a pint of lager with a pork pie on the side of it <laughs> instead of like that's a... my kind of pint. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did chuck in something and you said you've never heard of this uh, yeah so... bubble tea what's bubble tea yeah so uh you get like bubble tea so um oh, right, okay. you, get, you basically get tea and then you drop in these little fruit bubbles they look like sort of frogs born i think which might put a few people off but you can buy them off Amazon, you buy them off like tea shops, you buy them from all over the place now. And you get a little tub of sort of little bubbles of fruit. Um, and when you when you bite into them, they pop and then there's a juice burst inside of it. Um, so, yeah, I'll get me a little assistant that passes them at the minute. Um, so they call it Popping Bova. <laughs> so you get like different flavours. So I've got like sort of cherry one here, uh, blueberry one. And then passion fruit, that passion fruit one's open from last night, by the way. Um, Wait, I'm, I'm talking to my little squirrel assistant. So so I dropped in, a, with a beer that I knew was passion fruit anyway, I sort of dropped in these little bubbles of passion fruit in the bottom. So once I got to the bottom of the, of the pint, uh, you get these little tiny, hold on for you now, these little tiny bubbles. Oh, squishy. yeah. You just eat them, and it's got like passion fruit in it. All oh, right, okay. Interesting. So I mean, it's the... something worth trying. Yeah. So when you get the bottom of a pint, it works in tea. Um, you can sort of just get that little juicy extra burst of flavour. Excellent. Something I'm definitely going to look into trying. But like I said, get in touch with Pablo Disco Bar if you've got any thoughts on that. Positive, negative, or downright uh, abuse. Yeah. Send it Pab's way. He doesn't mind. He wants to know. That's why he's posed the question. Um, yeah. My last question. My last question, though, and uh, I think everybody will want to know the answer to this, or maybe have an inkling as to what the answer right. might be. When is the disco ball being wheeled back out? When are the? When is your mixing desk back out and all that kind of thing? When is the next? 
when's the next disco when when could we expect a return of pablo disco bars friday or saturday night disco yeah so i've kind of like unintentionally ended up taking a month off um at a month's annual leave so after my birthday weekend at hartlepool uh i just thought i'll give it a little bit of a a week off anyway and then got full of cold um and nobody wants to see me sort of drawing on snots on live on camera so i sort of left it for a little bit and then um i just thought well i've been sort of busy the last uh couple of fridays and then this weekend's like bang on the friday i've got a few things to do um so i'm kind of thinking of bringing it back next friday the friday after the bank holiday very good well i'm crossing my fingers and i'll be keeping my eye on instagram page because yeah i fancy a, a fancy a disco night in the shed yeah me uh, my disco balls are still apart from the main one here my disco balls are still currently on loan with the owl um, <laughs> the owl did get very attached to them and asked them if it could keep them for a few weeks hanging from the rafters so i've left um three of my large disco balls uh from my collection in the owl um so you've only got one, so, you've, so you've only got one ball yeah i'm like hitler um <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> i've currently only got one ball so yeah the other three i'll have to get back um i'll probably get back sort of after this weekend i'll let them have them for the bank on the weekend and then go and pick them back up good going well pabs thanks for the chat thanks for the catch-up looking forward to the rest of cask master and obviously the return of Pablo's Friday Night Disco as well. Yeah, cool. Cheers. Take care, mate.